All right, good morning, afternoon, evening, uh, whatever time it is uh, when you get around to watching this. Uh, I'm pretty excited to be participating for the first time in uh, DEF CON. I really wish, uh, obviously, I could be there in person. It would be far easier uh, to present this if I was able to see people face to face and uh, you would see, you know, my passion and excitement. I'm sure you might not hear it in my voice. Uh, but this is a project that I have been working on for um, about the beginning of the year, um, maybe even into last year, uh, and that is uh, Dragon OS Focal. Um, like I said, my name's Aaron. It's DEF CON 2020 safe mode. So we'll go down through here. I've got some, just a few slides, and then we'll go right into just kind of showing you what Dragon OS is. Uh, background on it, um, I you know, personally was working on some tools uh, right prior to COVID-19 um, to try to aid uh, in teaching software defined radios, uh, SDRs. So, um, you know, I had kind of that going for me. Uh, and then a couple projects way back 2008, nine or so, um, I built everything uh, that was AWD mesh. Um, some of you may be familiar with Open Mesh back then uh, when they had the OM1P. So I was kind of on my own using some open source and the router station. Everyone probably had one at one point or another uh, and built uh, Open Mesh with a few other people there. Sold the stuff um, all over the world, uh, dual radio mesh equipment. So, uh, and then about that same time, I was pretty active in the Zone Minder forums for some reason or another. And I just noticed that people have uh, a lot of problems with compiling things and building ZoneMinder um, from source. So I thought, well, why not use uh, Remaster Syst and help people out and get it all pre-built and working. So kind of take those two things uh, and it got me thinking about doing another distribution. Um, and then of course, COVID-19 hit uh, really big and you know a lot of people stuck at home. So I thought, well, why not uh, take my little project, take it to the next uh, level, get it out there you know, to the public so people could install, have something fairly new uh, in terms of software, free, and um, get into software defined radios while they were stuck at home. Um, put that you know, out uh, to the public. A lot of people um, were interested in it. RTLSDR.com and uh, Hackaday did you know, a few articles here. I just copied and pasted one article uh, that you can see date was dated back March 24, 2020. Talks a little bit about the project. So, um, you know, if you look online, you'll find a lot more uh, articles. But the progress I've made, I started with Debian Buster, just called it Dragon OS 10. Uh, that was I, I, actually Debian's probably my favorite. Uh, had a lot of tools in there. You can find that on uh, SourceForge. Uh, I just got to a point where I wanted to be able to support disk encryption and UEFI, so I moved on to Lubuntu 18.04, uh, called that Dragon OS LTS. That was uh, the bulk of my time was spent making that. I think I've made the most videos on that. And um, I guess I should point out too, I tried to keep all distributions, even though you know went from Debian to Lubuntu. Uh, I tried to keep as close as possible I could with the tools and applications that were installed so you know for the most part any of the videos you know I label um, should apply to any of the builds hopefully well anyways so now I'm on to Lubuntu 20.04 and uh, I just called that Dragon OS uh, focal so um, yeah the goal I spend I don't even know how many hours all these, you know, countless amount of hours uh, pre-installing anything I could possibly find uh, that would be of interest to, to people that are into software-defined radios. Uh, that could be from repositories, uh, dev packages, you know, source, so on and so forth. And I try to combine it all and spend and just be meticulous about everything working together. So, you know, f from remastering it to installing it to testing the whole installation, to um, checking every possible software-defined radio I can with it, or at least that I've owned or have been donated. Uh, you know, I have B two hundred five here, USRP radio, RTL SDR, um, Blade RF, um, 
some SDR play equipment. The SDR play people were extremely uh, helpful in uh, sending some, me some equipment out. Uh, that's been really awesome. Um, Ubertooth uh, from uh, Hackers Warehouse, they were really nice, sent some equipment out. Uh, and then as I kind of go through, I'll point out, um, I'll say thanks to uh, a lot of people that have helped uh, just with input and kind of behind the scenes discussion on what uh, software is out there and what to include. All right, so let's get out of the slides here. And, you know, I try to do everything within Dragon OS, which is running right now my latest uh, build, which is I was going to put out in conjunction with this. I just kept it still a beta build, Dragon OS Focal um, Public Beta 3. That's what's running this right now. Um, I have to admit, I was not familiar with uh, OB OBS and making videos like this, so hopefully it comes out okay. Uh, so we'll get down off the slides here. This is uh, Dragon OS. I know it doesn't look like much. You're just looking at the desktop here, but this is running live from a USB stick. Um, I've made it as easy as I can. You can see there's a little icon on the desktop. I've actually already uh, ran through the installer. Um, but I will show how easy it is to get it to install. You'll just come through here, um, answer a few questions. I'll just uncheck this for now just so that it's not hanging here and you all are staring at this screen while it's loading. Um, so, yeah, okay. So, um, it's it's not going to... I'm not going to make this video over again, but just trust me, I've uh, I've already ran through the installer uh, and it finished normally you would reboot um, that's why you see that uh, error pop up there anyways um, I'll just let that run in the background that was kind of <laughs> kind of to show you how easy it is to install um, I guess lessons lesson learned don't run it twice within the same uh, as it's running live but it's uh, Kind of hard with it. I have everything set up to make this video. So, anyways, uh, one of the big things I'll just go right down the list. I wanted to demonstrate here so you can get an understanding of uh, like w why is this any different than any other distribution? You know, ca you got Cali out there for your offensive uh, uh, security or you know pen testing. I just tried to make this distribution all about software-defined radios. So, base Lubuntu system with everything installed on top of it. Uh, one I'll point right out at the front. I've actually got it running here. Sig Digger uh, that I've put in here, built from source. Find this program really great. The developer has been super awesome. I know he was trying to help me out to have a, a TV decoder, I guess you'd say, uh, with sync and everything ready for this. Um, but I think you all will see that here in the near, real near future. So keep an eye on that. But what I'll show you is um, a Sig Digger running uh, using the B205 Mini that I have here, and if you happen to have, so I have a 5 gigahertz antenna on it. I've got a 5 gigahertz FPV uh, cam sitting here. Um, so if you open up your sample rate and your bandwidth, uh, you should be able to do what I'm doing here, um, which is <clears throat> we'll look at this in the spectrum. I've got my my window uh, open as far as I can here. Uh, I've got a, an inspection tab open here, and then I've got an FSK inspector. So that's another thing. When I make these videos, I try to go through and get people interested in uh, what these different acronyms, um, FSK, uh, means. And, you know, I don't, I don't explain everything, but I, I hope I generate enough interest where people will go out and do some more research. So... I've opened up the FSK inspector here, and you'll see where I've paused before uh, the the video, so you know you know what's coming here. Um, let's just open this up the whole way here. Um, actually, well, let's close out of this. We'll open another uh, inspector. You would bump up your bits per tone and start the clock recovery. Uh, I come up here, I left click and drag and open this uh, aperture up here, release, uh, uncheck fit the window and, and click record and come down to about the, let's see, 550 or so and you should see where I 
left off here. And this is live. This is capturing this live. I had hoped to literally just record the whole whole video like this, but not um, you know in such a way that I'd give everyone a seizure or something. So um, that's I, I felt that that was um, really unique, uh, very powerful a signal analysis tool and that just shows you th that's literally out of the box it's running live uh, you don't have to use a b205 I've actually uh, did this with a hack RF um, so yeah you know as long as you can get in the 5 gigahertz range uh, you should be you should be fine I'm sure I could probably do it with the some of the blade RS that go up that far this is a blade RF uh, micro a XA4 I think it is um, so yeah, uh, that just shows you that's really not the primary feature of this or of that window, that symbol stream window. It just happens to to be able to do that. So I'm sure if you pause, you'll you'll see me. And um, yeah, so let's see. Anyways, um, I'm going to close out of this. Uh, I'm going to change out a couple of things here. What I want to show is uh, we'll open up a few terminal windows here. Um, I'll do this as quick as I can here. This is just to show you something else that is uh, on here and uh, running out of the box. I grab a few cellular antennas here and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with SRS LTE. I uh, had a big interest in getting uh, LTE and GSM actually uh, as well running out of the box I know there's a lot of interest in that uh, obviously uh, you got to have shielding and stuff when you're transmitting any of this uh, so I just recommend um, be careful when you're doing any of uh, what I'm showing here but uh, uh, let me see SRS so this just shows you how fast we can get up and running. Uh, we'd want to start our core networking, our EPC here. Let's see, we can bring that online. We would do our EMB. And for this, I found that um, um, it will use the um, Edis uh, by default. But these two commands, starting up the core network and then starting up your EMB. And that failure you see there, um, that's uh, SOAPI um, for SDR play. Uh, what I have done is when you run the installer, that's another thing I guess that makes this unique, but you run the installer and then you reboot, um, you're going to be presented with a little pop-up that will prompt you to install the SDR play. So that'll happen. Your uh, user will be added to Kismet. So everything just kind of works out of the box. I know I keep saying that. Um, so these two commands here, I'd have to, you know, of course, this happens right when I do the presentation, but uh, let's see. With those two there, you can be uh, up and broadcasting your um, BTS, or, well, your base station, basically. Uh, if you had a second laptop and another Edis or Blade RF, which I have demonstrated in some of the YouTube videos, uh, you can use a virtual um, a handset through that radio to connect. So, yeah, that's that's how easy that is. That's all you know, pre-configured and working. Uh, you can do the same in my latest build uh, with GSM now. So I'm sure a lot of you are probably familiar with uh, Osmocom here. I've got the HLR, the BTS, the BSC, and the transmitting all, all in here. So you should um, be able to 
get a GSM base station up and working pretty quick. If you have a um, Edis, so if we start up our BSC and we start up our If I start up my might be a that I will see and so. Now you see, now we've got our um, base station uh, online. I know um, there's an error here, but uh, let's see. All right, there we go. So. You you can, you can, this uh, is actually something I'll address in the next build, but that's actually a pretty common thing and explained on you. Um, that is how to uh, get around uh, setting the thread priority. Um, so, all right. So, there's three things um, right out of the box a uh, way to decode 5 gigahertz video. Um, the LTE network, GSM network. Uh, something else that I do is I tr I keep everything that I install uh, from source or not a packaged uh, installation. I keep it all here in the actual uh, build when you finish installing it so that you have all of the source that you need uh, to make any changes or uninstall anything that uh, you may want to you may want to remove. Um, let's see, I'll show another example here. So GNU Radio 3.8 is in here. If we take a look at, uh, let's just take a look at GRRDS. Uh, you'll see right there. You got ADSB, Deck 2, and I've checked all of this. GSM uh, in uh, GNU Radio 3.8 works perfectly fine with the MZ Catcher script. You got uh, Radium there. Um, I'm not super familiar with uh, satellites, but I've included that. GR Tempest, I checked that and actually uh, got that working with some SDR play equipment and was able to view a monitor uh, without having to use the Tempest SDR, which I know a lot of people use. So um, if you want to get into GNU Radio, which I recommend. Um, you can take a look at uh, one of the examples here, a real easy one. And again, I really feel like a benefit of this distribution is you can run it live if you don't want to install it. Um, there may be some things that uh, may have some issues running live but for the most part uh, works pretty well so this is uh, GNU radio I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with this uh, so again right out of the box So, 
you got your RDS on there, uh, you've got your gain settings. So I have tried to go, or I have went through every application you can possibly uh, think of on here: SDR trunk, Airband, uh, Retrogram, everything. I have spent a lot of time um, making this this work. So uh, I know I said that uh, I'd thank some people here. I'm trying to think what else can I open up and show before we or before I close this out. Um, just run down the list here. You see under uh, internet, you got GQRX, SDR Angel. I just recently built SDR Angel with um, Soapy support. So now uh, I, I can't I can't not uh, show SDR play equipment uh, in this video, considering how much uh, help that they have given. So this is a RSP1 Alpha and SDR Angel. Let's see here, so now, now we can use our SDR Play equipment. Uh, let's see. Actually, you know what? Since we're running live, I'm going to fix this real quick. Um, see, there's always something. Um, because I haven't... Because I haven't installed and rebooted, uh, my script didn't take place. So I just... Uh, when you're running live, you would have to actually install the API. So now we should be able to come back here, open up our SDR Angel. Now, fingers crossed, we have our RSP1 Alpha. You can add a uh, well, anything you can do um, DMR, um, uh, DSD demodulators, DATV, uh, all sorts of uh, options here. Oops. See, doesn't that get awkward when you're doing something live and then it doesn't work like you expect? Okay. Threw me off there a second. So that's SDR play uh, equipment in SDR Angel now. You gotta obviously adjust the uh, gain correctly there. So that's SDR Angel. Same thing if you come down the list here, 
We've got um, Cubic SDR, uh, Cubic SDR with SDR Play support, um, Q Spectrum Analyzer, really good to use with the HackRF. Uh, if you want to do some uh, replay, capture and replay attacks, you got Universal Universal Radio Hacker. That also, um, yeah, actually I should have put SDR Play support next to there, which I, I believe... I believe it uh, no actually that does not have SDR play support yet they're still that's still being worked on uh, let's see what else we've got uh, spike which is um, uh, the gentleman uh, by the name of Rick uh, who suggested I uh, do this video um, is a big fan of the uh, that equipment um, that program let's see what else um, and then really anything else that's sitting in the uh, that is not installed with a nice easy to click uh, GUI you can run from here uh, and you can kind of get an idea there so um, Sparrow Wi-Fi matter of fact um, I know a lot of people are familiar with uh, Kismet. Uh, I suggest taking a look at Sparrow Wi-Fi too. They've got some nice integration there with the HackerF and uh, Ubertooth. Uh, I don't actually have my HackerF right now, but what you can do with uh, spare Wi-Fi is overlay the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz spectrum over top of your wireless NIC card uh, that would run up in the top here. And of course, do similar to Kismet, but really not do the full packet capture and you know getting the clients and stuff. You'd see the you'd see the access points, um, and so not to uh, give away uh, you know all my access points here I'll just kind of show you the spectrum analysis uh, analyzer with the uber tooth that's uh, plugged in here so uh, thank you for, uh, to hacker warehouse for that to uh, let me check that all right uh, let's see so I, I think um, I think that's enough kind of programs I hit on a lot of the big stuff and I would encourage uh, anyone to take a look at the YouTube page that I have here um, So uh, I would say uh, I would encourage anyone to uh, that wants to know more take a look at my YouTube page here, uh, SEMA Executor. Uh, you can come down through all the videos that I've uh, put on here. I, I don't know. I think there's about maybe 60 or so um, over all sorts of various different topics, uh, from showing the installation to doing capture and replay. Uh, using the Kerberos SDR for direction finding, um, proof of concept on uh, smart cell phone jamming, uh, signal analysis, um, spy server, everything you could uh, think of. Uh, I've tried to I've tried to cover here and educate. So, all right, I think that about wraps it up. If you uh, need to find the project you can just google dragon os you can do focal if you want that's the latest you'll come find it on sourceforge uh, you got your files and you get your latest there so um, yeah i appreciate uh, everyone um, kind of listening up to this point and just want to say you know thank you to uh, developer of uh, you know sig digger the sdr play equipment hackers warehouse um, you know, I'm, I'm 
drawn a blank right now, but there's been so many, uh, oh, well, everyone on YouTube that has provided suggestions or emailed me kind of behind the scenes. I appreciate it. I hope that this has been uh, helpful during uh, COVID-19. Uh, I know that a lot of people uh, have been stuck at home, so I just wanted to try and do what I could to help others. So, all right. Thanks.